Radio Theater brings you Judy Garland and John Hodiak in The Clock. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A popular magazine now on the stands describes New York as one city in America where dreams come true, where the fabulous and the improbable are ever present. An example is a clipping which I have here. It reports that as a result of seeing Metro Golden Mayor's screen success, the clock, scores of servicemen are riding up and down escalators in the Pennsylvania station looking for romance. The reason they give is, well, that's how a soldier met Judy Garland in the picture. In tonight's uh, radio theater version of the clock, we show you how it happened. And we bring you Judy Garland playing her original screen role. <laughs> Department of Overwhelming Statistics. Subject, New York City. There are five boroughs in New York. Population, 7,454,995. So many people. Too many people, you might say. Almost too many people. The above population lives in an area of 299.0 square miles. No place for a strange in New York. Too big. And everybody hurry and just rush, rush, rush. Trains and ferries, buses and taxi cabs, subways and hills. Who are they all? What are they doing? What do they want? It's Sunday morning, a spring morning, and in New York's Pennsylvania station, a young soldier gazes in awe at the swirling, bumping crowd that mill about him. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir. Yeah? Could you tell me how to get out of this place? Uh, just use that escalator, Corporal. Oh, well, where does that take you? 7th Avenue, in from camp, huh? That's right. Well, you like it here. Yeah? Well, well, what are some of the things to see? What do you think would be good on a Sunday? Well, oh, guys, I don't know. I work here, but I live in Jersey. First time in 11 years I've been here on Sunday. But you'll find fun to keep the busy. Goodbye. Thanks. Oh, say, where can... Oh, oh! Oh, I guess I didn't look where I was going. No, I guess you didn't. Well, you're going up, soldier, or aren't you? Young man, do you mind if I use the escalator? Oh, hey, listen! Soldier! Uh, my heel! Who? My heel! Me? No, 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 behind you, my heel! I'll, I'll be right up. Wait for me! What's the matter with your foot? Sprain your ankle? No, no, no. Oh, look, you want to stay off that foot. If you twisted it, I'll see what I... But I didn't twist it. Well, I better take a look at it. Hey, the heel's off your shoe. That's what I've been trying to tell you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll go down and find it for you. But in that crowd... Oh, I'll find it. What was it, just a little heel? Yes, but that's all right. No, 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 no. I'll find it all right. I'll be right back. How does your shoe feel now? Are you sure he fixed it all right? Oh, it's fine. I never thought a shoe repair shop would be open on Sunday. Well, I go that way. Thank you for carrying the bag. Oh, it's all right. Oh, uh, do you mind if I go a little way with you, sort of look around? Uh, no. Not if you want to. Thank you. I get a bus, uh, I get a bus on Fifth Avenue. Uh, but, uh... <laughs> oh. What's the matter? Buildings. I've never seen buildings like that in my life. And wherever you look. Well, look, if I'm going to catch my bus, maybe... Uh, I'm sorry. Let's go. I guess I've got a nerve, all right, getting on the bus with you. Well, it's one way to see the city. And this is the first time I ever rode on a double-decker bus. Sure nice in the open like this. <laughs> You've lived here all your life. No, just three years. Folks here? No. There's uh, Radio City up ahead. You mean you live all alone? No. Uh, look, there's St. Patrick's Cathedral. Uh, you're not married, are you? No, I live with another girl. Oh. Well, uh, what do you do, if you don't mind my asking? I'm a secretary. Oh, I see. What kind of an office do you work in? Just an office. Uh, I guess I'm pretty nosy. Yes, you are. I'm sorry. 
Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, 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 Gesundheit. Uh, You're not catching cold. Oh, no, no. no. It's, it's the sun. It always does this to me. I sneeze exactly twice, and then I'm all through. Oh. Here, here's your handkerchief. Well, hadn't you better keep it? No, no, I'm all finished. Uh, look, don't you think you'd better get off here soon? Well, I didn't have anywhere to go, but if I bothered you... Oh, no, no. You mean that you don't bother me? You sure? Sure. I, I just meant that this bus only goes as far as the park. I got a park here with trees and grass? Yes, I think you'd enjoy it. There's a lake and a, a children's well, zoo. You wouldn't care to walk just a little with me in the park, No, you? that's out of the question. I've got to get home. You see, I've been in the country and I... I... Uh, 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 oh, where... Where is it? Thank you. <laughs> I never get tired of watching the fields. They're such Canadians. Did you ever think how much some animals remind you of people? Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Now, you take that seal there. I've got an ant in Minnesota that looks just like that. I think they tell me that it looks exactly like an owl. Like an owl. Ridiculous. You don't. You do. You look exactly like an owl. Exactly. Uh, what is it you remind me? Never mind. I don't want to know. Hey, look at that. What? Kid with a sailboat. Kids are a great study when you get to know them. Mm. Hiya, Skipper. Lay off, mister. Let's see. Three men, huh? Oh, say, will you look... Get your big mitts off my boat. Who do you think you are? I don't get it. Kids usually like me. What a rude little boy. They hardly ever kick me in the shins. I don't understand. Well, Joe, I've really got to go home. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> goodbye, Alice. Goodbye? Uh, what, what are you going to do? Oh, I don't know. Uh, over there, that's 79th Street, huh? Mm-hmm. The museum's over there. Museum, huh? Uh-huh. Well, that's an idea. Well, you know, I've um only been there once or twice myself. It's a shame. I I ought to go there more often. Really? Museum, huh? <laughs> well, I'll show you where it is. I've got time for that, I suppose. Come on. Okay, 1411, 1375 B.C. Or during the 18th dynasty. You will notice... Uh, we could go out and see the paintings, Joe. How are your feet doing? They know they've been walking. Well, let's just lean against here for a while. All right. Look, there's Rodin's thinker. Yeah, I've been thinking, too. What? How lucky I am. Oh. Uh, well, I was also thinking I could never get used to this city. No, this isn't what I want. What do you want? Oh, a little business of my own out home in Mapleton. Why? Because it's my home. Not that I don't want to get around and see things, but... I get to thinking sometimes... Like in the spring, in the evening. I can almost smell the grass outside the house. Dad used to mow the lawn before dinner. He never let us kids do it. Did you have a dog? Dog? No. Did you? No. Well, why'd you ask that? I, I just wondered. <laughs> no, I didn't have a dog. After the war, I'm going to be a builder. Well, you mean a contractor? Well, more like a carpenter. I want to put up houses myself. Well, they say houses are all going to be alike, made out of plastics and... Not in Mapleton, they won't. Why do you want to be a contractor, Joe, or a carpenter? Oh, I like working with wood, I guess. I like the feel of it and building things with my own hands. Know what I mean? Yes, I do, I think. <laughs> what's that, the closing bell? Oh, Joe, what time is it? Uh, it's five o'clock. Five o'clock? Oh, I've simply got to go. Well, I guess everybody does if they're closing out. <laughs> yes. You know, you can sure learn a lot in a museum. <laughs> Stop. It's been a nice afternoon. I uh, suppose you're probably busy tonight. Oh, yes, I am. Well, thanks a lot for being so nice. Uh, I'd like a cigarette? No, thanks. Oh, you're a lighter. Hmm? That's one of those things that lights anywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it has a shield to keep the flame from blowing out, see? Mm-hmm. Would, would you like it? Oh, no, you keep it. Oh, take it. I really wouldn't have any use for it. Well, I, I just wanted you to have it. Oh, well, thank you so much. Here comes my bus. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe we'll meet again sometime. Maybe. Seventy-nine Street. Well, goodbye.
goodbye. Goodbye. A- and thanks for the lighter. Oh, that's all right. Now, let's go, lady. Goodbye. Goodbye, Alice. Any goodbye. Second. Any second. There's the Hey, there. Alice. Alice. I think that soldier's calling to you, young woman. I'm sorry. What, what Alice. You? Alice. No. Alice. He's coming after the bus. Something wrong. I, I don't think so. John. Freddie's called up every ten minutes. He says you have a date with him. Yes, I have. Well, I've got to get going. I'm supposed to meet Bill. Have a good time. Oh, uh, what happened to you? For well, nothing. I met a soldier. Oh, now you're not trying to tell me you got picked up by a uniform. Picked up? <laughs> really, Helen? What's that you've got? That's a cigarette lighter. Where did you get it? He gave it to me. Uh huh. What else happened, Alice? Nothing. <laughs> well, I guess it's all right as long as you got rid of him. Well, I didn't exactly get rid of him. What? I got a date with him tonight. Good grief, pal. You don't even know the man. Why, as far as he's concerned, this is just a pickup. Helen, I wish you wouldn't keep saying that. Joe's a nice boy. He's lonesome, that's all. Mm-hmm. So it's Joe already. Joe what? Joe. Oh, you don't even know. Oh, look, Al, I don't want to butt in, but it just doesn't make sense to pick up a... to make friends with a stray soldier. I know they're all swell kids, but a girl's got to look out for herself. You're going to use this pin tonight? Oh, here, you can wear it. Thanks. It's different when you meet a serviceman through friends and you know who he is. So listen, Alice, you've never done anything like this before, and I'm not going to let you do it now. I'm just not going to let you do it. You'll be waiting. It's going to be awfully disappointed. Oh, honey... He won't feel half as bad as you'll feel after his leave is over and he goes back to camp. Who's you right? I am right. Anyway, Freddie will be phoning. Oh, Freddie. And at least you know his last name. Remember what I said now, I'll. I'll remember. Night, Helen. Night. <laughs> Yes, Helen told me you called. Well, I, I'm almost ready right now. Half hour will be fine. Yes, baby. Oh, uh, excuse me. Yes? Say, is there any other clerk here except this one? Meeting somebody? Yeah. Well, this is the clerk, all right. This is where everybody meets. Well, maybe it's a little fat, huh? Uh, let me see... No, right on the nose. Exactly 20 and a half minutes after 7. Oh, well, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, there you are. Am I late? Alice. Oh, no. Oh, hiya, darling. Oh, baby. You look cute. Oh, here. Darling, it's lovely. Yeah, be ahead. Here, hold my mirror. All right. How's this? That's fine. Now, how do you like it? Oh, well. Well, come on. Let's hurry. Something we can do for you, Corporal? Uh, I'd like to have uh, gardenia, please. Yes, sir. Put it in a bar? No, paper will be fine. Be careful of the pin. That'll be one dollar. Oh, uh, do you happen to have the right time? That clock in the lobby is always right. See, it's a quarter of eight. Oh, yeah. You're late, huh? <laughs> well, don't worry, Corporal. The gardenia will do the trick. Yeah. Oh, your money. Here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. Terribly sorry, but some people called just as I was waiting. Oh, no, no, no. You're not late. I was, I was just worried about you. Oh, Joe. Want me to hold your mirror for you? Oh, please. Uh, how'd you know I like gardenia? Oh, that's just like a chair. <laughs> Am I holding the mirror right? Right. Just a second, now. There. Oh, you're beautiful. Let, let's go, Alan. <laughs> Thank you. 
No, I feel fine. I'm sure glad you picked this restaurant. Well, I just took a chance. I've never been here before either. Alice, you started to tell me about Helen. Oh, well, I was just going to say that we work in the same office. She's in the sales division. Bill says she's practically an executive. Who's Bill? Uh, he's a friend of Helen. Sometimes Freddie and I go out with him. Uh-huh. You like it, don't you? The city and the office and everything. I love it. I never wanted any different. Never? Mm-hmm. Don't you want to settle down someday, maybe? Oh, that. Well, not for a long time, anyway. Well, what about this uh, Freddie that you mentioned? Freddie? Mm-hmm. What about him? Well, what about him? Well, does that suit Freddie? I don't think I care to answer that. Well, uh, um, I was only asking. My goodness, I hardly know you. I don't have to answer anybody's questions about Freddie or anything else. Well, wait a minute now. This Freddie doesn't mean anything right, to me. All right, well, let's leave him out. Well, I was only asking. I don't know why you had to bring him up at Look, all. Look, you brought him up. I never even heard of the guy. I think maybe I'd better go. What are you doing? It's cold. You've got ice cream all over your sleeve. Oh. Helen was right. She told me what would happen. Look, I... I'm sorry, my sister. I said... I'd listen to her. Different when, when you meet a service man through friends, you know who he is. Then, then you know who he is. Only sometimes when a girl dates with a soldier, she isn't only thinking of herself. She knows he's far away from home, alone, no one to talk to. What are you feeling now? You've got brown eyes. Oh, look, I... I want... I think... Oh, let's go someplace else. Honey, here we are in the park again. Except it's night. And it's a different park. Oh? That's the river down there. I've been talking so much I hardly know it. Look. So many stars. Yeah. But that's only a few of them. I know. It's all you ever see. Just a little part where you are. And they're the ones we know up there. Vega, Orion, Big Dipper. I never knew their names. And all the people in this city, all around us, all the people in the country, all the people in the, in the world, out of all that, just go start with Big Dipper and what you said. And you and I down here in this park together. Strange, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't seem strange anymore. Suppose we hadn't met. We couldn't not have met. I know. It's strange, though, my coming home early from the country. Well, that was only a little part of it. And you're being there in the station. And that was part of it, too. There were other things, like you're leaving home, my getting leave just when I did. That's all part of it. Even those ships in the river. Mm-hmm. They're part of a convoy. That's why I got this lead. Guess it'll be the last one I'll get. I see. Lots of things, isn't it? And some don't matter and others do. Well, they all matter. This night, being together. Yes. Yeah. They matter, don't they? I don't know. Alice. Oh, Joe, I don't know. It's quiet here. Almost as quiet as it is out home. Never quiet, really. City's full of sound, always underneath. Do 
in just a minute, we'll bring you the second act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. Here's Mr. Keeley with our next act. We continue with Act Two of The Clock, starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. <laughs> a few moments have passed since Alice and Joe walk slowly and silently out of the park to Alice's bus stop. But in those few moments, midnight has come and gone, and so has Alice's bus. Well, we can take a taxi cab, Alice. Yeah, that'll be awfully expensive. Oh, that's all right. Wake up for now. Hey, uh, taxi! Oh, that's not a taxi. Is it? No, no, it's a milk truck. Oh, Oh, no, I couldn't do nothing like that. 
I want to see how you feel when we get uptown. Oh, he caught me right in the wind. The eye, too. You got a few. Oh, boy, sure feels like it. And I missed me song. I missed the whole number. <laughs> What do I do, Alice? Stay on the same street? Mm-hmm. Gosh, I'm tired. How's Al doing back there? He sounds You know what he said? He said you and I were natural born milkmen. That's because we brought back the empties when we delivered the milk. Milk's getting right, Joe. It's almost morning. Mm-hmm. Back home, I used to see the dawn come up sometimes. Yeah, me too. Up over the Indiana field. We'll be going along. Going along? Why, breakfast is all ready. Oh, no, really, we could. Never tasted cooking like Mama's in all your life. Why, she can mix you up the finest glass of ice water you ever drunk. She makes the best corn cakes you ever had. Come on, now, you better sit down. They're all ready, too. Well, watch yourself now. The house. Hey, um, uh, you folks married? Oh, oh, no. Lots of young folks get married these days. Father, one of these what is hot, Al. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's well, right. I, I think you have to know somebody a long time before you get married. I mean, you don't want to do something as serious as that just in a minute. Well, me, I think you can find out as much about somebody in a minute as you can in a whole lifetime. <laughs> you know what she was doing when I first seen her? Now, Al. No, no. Cooking butter cakes in child's window. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. And the minute I seen her, I knew she was for me. I don't know, though. I... I don't think it's fair to the girl, a soldier, getting married. Well, how does he know what condition he'll come back in? Well, Joe, if people ever thought about all the things that could happen, they'd never do anything. Well, I think if a girl and a boy want to get married, all the talk in the world ain't going to stop. Never has yet. And it, uh, uh, Al. What's the matter? Get away from the muffins. Company first. Well, look, they got some, ain't they? Just exactly like his uncle. Those Henry. It isn't the uncle. It's my cousin, oh. Michael Henry. He's a clerk of the court for Judge Ford. Well, your uncle, your cousin, what difference does it make? <laughs> well, it's my cousin's the one that can eat. Well, I never saw such eating. I never saw <laughs> such a place in my life as this just trying to get something to eat. Oh, right. Here, take the muffins. Take the muffins. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you like riding in the subway, Joe? Well, it sure is different, all right. They go so fast. Is that what you've been thinking about for the last five minutes? No, I was thinking about Al Henry and his wife. They're lovely people. I was thinking about what he said. About how it really doesn't matter how long a person knows one another. I guess it doesn't matter so much. And what have you been thinking about? Something you said about a soldier not marrying because he doesn't know what condition he'll come back in. Oh. Well, I think if two people are really in love, that wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't it? Of course I... Oh, Joe. Joe, I don't want to leave you today. Alice, could you... What, what about your office? I... I suppose I could find some excuse. Oh, that, that'd be wonderful, Alice. Yes, but... No, hurry this way. We have to change trains. Boy, this mob, even worse than Penn Station. <laughs> you know, half as confused as I was my first time in this place. Yeah, I'll just hang on to you. <laughs> what were you saying about the office? Well, it won't take long, and you can wait outside. Oh, that's swell. Well, here comes our train, Joe. Central, 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 central
on, one more. Please, one more. All right, step lively, everybody, all the way in. Come on, come on, Joe. Yeah, step lively, everybody, all the way in. coming, Alice. Wait inside there. Uh, all the way in, folks. Step lively. Oh, what's the step there? Come on, Alice. Alice. All the way in. Alice, that's all. Watch the doors, Al. That's all. Wait a minute. I've got to get on there. No, you don't. Let it rain, I've got to get out here. Please, can you tell me what the next station is, mister? Uh, no English, uh, no English. Uh, lady, could you tell me what the next station is? The next station? Now, let me see. This is Grand Central, and I'm sure the next station would be... No, no, it wouldn't be that. Now, if this is... Next station? Sure, bud. 14th Street. 14th Street. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Uh, mister, mister. Yeah? I I've been looking all over for a girl. Did you see a girl get off the train here a little while ago? Yeah, I've seen a thousand girls get off, fella. Is this the next stop after Grand Central? The next express stop, yeah. You mean there's something else? Sure, the local after Grand Central, the local stop to 33. How do I get there? Take the stairway at the end of the platform and go across. The stairway ends the platform. I've got to find her. I've got to find her. <laughs> Here. I want to tell you something about this city of New York. Any of you been here before? No, well, it's a big place, boys. Population 7,454,995. I beg your pardon. Yes, ma'am. Is there someone in charge I could see, please? Oh, uh, there's a receptionist, miss. Over there. Thank you. I'll take the subway system right there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, excuse me, I... I'm looking for a soldier. I thought maybe he'd come here to the USO. Any particular soldier? My friend. We got separated in the subway. I I've been looking all over for him. Well, what's his name? Joe. Joe what? I don't know. Well, that's a big deal. Or is this a joke? Oh, no, please. I... We, we only just met yesterday, and... I don't know. It didn't seem to make any difference what his name was. Oh, it didn't make any difference. I, I know it sounds funny, but the night went by so fast, and I got sleepy, and so we lost each other this morning, and he's only got today. Well, I don't see how I can help the young lady, and I don't think I'd go around telling that story, either. Oh, you don't understand. I've got to find him. I... What am I... What am I going to do? In a moment, we'll bring you the third act of The Clock, starring Judy Garland and John Hodiak. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act three of The Clock. Starring Judy Garland as Alice and John Hodiak as Joe. In the bewildering puzzle of city streets, swirling with a flood of alien faces, Joe and Alice have searched hopelessly for each other. Their hearts gripped with a realization, terrible and absurd, that they will never meet again. Not knowing where else to turn, Joe wearily makes his way to the Pennsylvania station. Can I get plain information here? Yeah, what do you want to know, son? Next train for Aberdeen, Maryland. Aberdeen? Yeah. Mm, 147. Going back to camp? That's right. Uh, track 14. Thank you. Uh, help you, lady? Excuse me, please. I beg you. Oh, um, officer, could you tell me how I can... Alice. Uh, where do you want to go? Alice? 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 Oh, Joe, I, I thought you were lost. I didn't know where to look. Quick, quick what's your name? Mayberry. Oh, Joe. Mayberry. I, I didn't know where to find you. I didn't think I'd ever find you again. Mayberry. Oh, oh, look, Alice, we can't wait. We mustn't. It wouldn't be right. Oh, Joe, are you sure? Don't you see? We might never have found one another again. No, no, no. Don't say that. I've got to say it. Look, please, please, will you marry me? Oh, yes, Joe, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I don't 
think the marriage might be this busy, did you? Well, I guess all we can do is sit here and wait our turn. Got your black test time. papers, everybody? Got your black paper. test papers? What's that, Joe? I don't know. Oh, well, uh, mister? Yes? Mister, what's that about blood test papers? According to law, applicants for a marriage license must have a blood test certificate. Well, we didn't know when. Where did we get one? Uh, 67 White House. We tell them Mr. Schwartz sent you. Be quiet, please, quiet. Two subway stops downtown. All right, Irving, who's next? How long are you over here? Uh, till 4 o'clock. You'll have to hurry, Joe. I can find this. Everybody got your blood test papers. Got you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, where do you think you're going? Oh, we're looking for the blood test. You got a pass? No, we were told this was a place. You can't go upstairs without a pass. Well, where do we get a Lieutenant pass? Lieutenant Ruffles, second floor, but you can't go up without a pass. Now, take a seat over there. Who do you think he is? Hey, wait a minute. You two getting married? Yeah. Well, why don't you say so? Here, use this pass. Oh, room 388. Hey, hey. All right, get it all fixed up, all right? No. Now, what's the matter? You're too busy. We couldn't get the papers till tomorrow. We had to get them by 4 o'clock this afternoon. Oh, why don't you go to a private laboratory? What do you mean? Well, you can go to one of the approved labs and get the results in an hour or so. I got a list somewhere. Oh, please, please. Yeah, yeah, here's one. The L and N Public Health Service Laboratory, 631 Canal Street. 631 Canal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, we're Alan and Mayberry. Here we are. Your blood test papers? Here, right here. I just have to stamp. Here you are. Silver. Joe. Joe, look what she's found. Not valid for 72 hours. Not valid for 72 hours. There's just one thing you can do. A judge at the Supreme Court may issue a waiver of the time clause. Uh, a little quiet, if you please, permitting the parties to get married at once. Supreme Court judge. We can try, Joe. We can try. <laughs> A waiver? Oh, but you're too late, folks. Too late? Yeah, I'm sorry, but the judge has just left. Oh, no. Oh, uh, excuse me, but this name on the desk, are you Michael Henry? Yeah. Then you're Al Henry's cousin. He told us about you. Well, why didn't you tell me? Say, maybe I can catch the judge after all. Oh, uh, how is Al? Uh, he's fine. Him? Uh, she's fine, too. Oh, that's fine. Uh, look, don't you think you better hurry? Oh, I will just have to something. Joe, Joe, look at the time. Oh, it's so hard, so hard. Uh, Mr. Schwartz, wait a minute, Mr. Schwartz. Elevator going down. Yes? Well, we got the waiver, and here's our license, so can't we get married? Oh, you're the young couple who, uh... Well, they, they, they told us your office was closed. Going down. Well, I got through a little early. Just have time to catch the 4.30. Sorry. Please, it isn't 4 o'clock yet. Make up your mind, Mr. Schwartz. Oh, come along. You can marry us, can't you? Oh, yes. We have a little chapel, potted plants, and a few ferns. Oh, that's nice. Irving! Yes, uh, look me up another train. It's not four o'clock yet. Randy! Randy! Yes, Mr. Schwartz. Turn the vacuum cleaner off. Don't you see there's a wedding? What do you think? This is a factory? No. And stand back there. Now, let's see, young man. Yes. The young lady should be on the left. Oh, yes. Stay here, Bernie. We need witnesses. Sure. I'll stand. Now, your certificate, please. This is a serious and solemn step you hereby undertake. Do either of you know of any reason why you both should not be legally joined in marriage? Uh, then do you, uh, Joseph Allen, take this woman as your lawful wedded wife? You promise to love and honor. Don't say I do. No, I, 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 do, I do. There's a train out there. I couldn't hear. Do you, Alice Mayberry, take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. Place the ring upon the bride's finger. I haven't got a ring. Under the law, it is necessary to have a ring. Oh, I didn't know. The floors can be waxed later, please. Boys, you both have consented to wedlock. I do, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the law of the state of New York, now pronounce you husband and wife. And may God bless your union. Here's your certificate. Oh. Thank you. Hey, boss, there's a 4.40 train. That's Sunday, stupid. Look up weekdays. Oh, good luck, Mr. and Mrs. Allen. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, lady and mister. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I didn't have any flowers. No. Well, 
didn't have time. We rushed it off. Well, I... I guess I want to finish cleaning up in here. Well, we made it, Joe. It's just four o'clock. This sure isn't much of a honeymoon. Just sitting in the park. Joe, are your mother and father living? Uh-huh. Are you? Oh, yes. Yes, they're, they're living. Do you suppose I should write your folks, maybe? Oh, I suppose so. I suppose I should write to yours. Yeah, that'd be nice. Um, would you like to see our house? I have a snapshot in my wallet. Here. Oh, that's nice. That's my mother. You suppose she'll like me? Oh, sure she will. I should say so. Do what, what kind does your train go? Well, uh, I, I don't have to be back in camp till tomorrow noon. Alice. What? I guess you're not very glad you married me, are you, Alice? Oh, I'm sorry, Joy. I guess I just don't... You very mad. Oh, I know. I, I don't blame you. But it wasn't your fault. It was just that it was... I, I know. So ugly. I know. I mean, it wasn't... I know. I, it's all right, darling. It's all right. <laughs> Across the street, there. Somebody else just got married, too. They just came out of that church, see? Oh, Joe, I'd like to go into the church, Joe, please. Well, I want to go into the church, too. I don't think they'll mind. Oh, 
can I say it? How can I tell you everything I want to tell you? How much I love you, how I'm thinking about you every, every minute, every day. How... Alice. Alice, try. Will, will you try not to worry about anything when I'm... Joe, darling. You're coming back. You want me to tell you how I know? Two days ago, you came to the city and you didn't know anyone. You didn't know me and I didn't know you. And now we're married. And, and we both know that that was meant to be. So don't you see who... Whoever makes the arrangements for people is doing pretty well for us. That's all we need to know. Down this way, darling. Still showing me my way around. <laughs> Are you sure you can't send me your laundry? Oh, Ma, don't worry about those things. I'm in the Navy. Uh, Are you sure you got everything straight now, honey? Oh, I won't forget, guys. Remember, the insurance and the car runs out. Well, that's something we don't have to worry about yet. Hello, soldier. What? Where are you going? Hiya, Skipper. Oh, I'm just going away. I like you. Well, thanks, I like you, too. <laughs> you see, honey, I told you kids like me, they hardly ever kick me to shit. <laughs> just once in a while, darling. This is it, Joe. Yeah. Tickets, please. Show your tickets, please. Goodbye, darling. Take good care of yourself. Don't forget to write. Oh, no, no, I won't. I love you. Uh, See you soon.